Hello again, thanks for joining us for another Fathom Live. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Jeff Sturtz, and uh, we're excited to, to have you along with us. We have a, a great guest today, and we are giving away a prize as well, so we're going we're gonna to do that right away here. We've already pre-selected our, uh, our, our winner, um, so drum roll. Uh, our winner of last week's contest is VK Raghavan. I think that's how you say it, uh, but uh, congratulations to you. Uh, so he, uh, VK, has, he has won a yard sign package, um, and uh, that's what we're doing again this week. So the first 100 people that comment are automatically entered into a chance to win a yard sign package up to 200 bucks. You can get several yard signs and even frames, I think, with that. So um, uh Go ahead and start commenting. Uh, give us a shout out where you're from. Um, also, if you share the video, you're entered again into the contest. So uh, feel free to do that. Also, uh, I'll mention now too, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to our YouTube channel, go ahead and do that and hit the little subscribe uh, bell, uh, the notification bell. That way, when we go live and you weren't thinking about it, your phone will tell you. And uh, you can, you can uh, not miss a live show. Uh, our guest today is Matt Thompson. Uh, before we bring Matt on, though, uh, I wanted to thank our, our sponsor, Go Social Agent. Um, you know, building relationships is key in real estate, especially if you want to spend less on your overall marketing. Uh, so the good friends at Go Social Agent, they help you by keeping that uh, business page that you have for your, for your real estate page uh, populated with relevant articles for your clients. It's very affordable. If you happen to be a Fathom agent, um, it's even more affordable because you get a free year, uh, I believe, of, of posting. So uh, they have a lot of other ser services, including agent branded articles, uh, buyer and seller hand handbooks, Facebook ad campaigns, and so on. So this is all to help you grow your online community. So g give the friends at Go Social Agent a try. Uh, and it's uh, www. as you might guess, gosocialagent.com. Come. So we got all that stuff out of the way. Matt uh, Thompson is with us. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure, Jeff. This is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Matt, you're in Littleton, Colorado, and nice. uh, and you said it's hot there today, and uh, but uh, but you can just run up to the mountains and things are cool again. That's uh, I, I would probably be up in the mountains right now if I weren't uh, <laughs> weren't joining you guys. So it's... all right. All right, so that that's where you're gonna head afterwards here. Uh, yes. So, um, just a real quick background for for Matt. Uh, he has a background in education. Uh, you taught elementary ed, is is that correct? Uh, junior high. I was a sixth grade teacher for seven years, and then that was in the Seattle area. So that was junior high where where we were. Very good. And you still do education kind of stuff, right? I do. Yeah, I would say uh, probably thirty to forty percent of my time is still spent on teaching and training. Uh, just in the business world now and not, uh, right. not teaching kids. Right. Very good. Uh, but you do have kids. I do. I've got two amazing daughters and they are a ton of fun and, uh, couldn't, couldn't ask for anything more with them. I've, it's fun when you marry up and, uh, marry somebody that much higher than you. It's amazing. You get cute kids that are well behaved too. So <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. Um, but also just as uh, part of the background, and, and this is on purpose because I, I do want to kind of set things up here for some of the things we're going to talk about. Um, you've owned offices um, in a couple of different states or you've run offices of, of agents in a couple of different states, correct? Correct. Yeah. So I, I started my real estate career just outside of Seattle uh, in Gig Harbor, Washington, uh, about 45 minutes, 50 minutes southwest of Seattle. I uh, had an opportunity to be part of the ownership group of a uh, of another franchise there. And then uh, just over six years ago, had the opportunity to move out here to the greater Denver area um, and take over as a team leader, kind of running the running the office of uh, of two different offices in that same franchise of my previous brokerage. Very good. And then and now you're um leading in real estate. You're leading the state of Colorado, I understand, uh, for Fathom? Um, Correct. Yep. All right. Very good. Yeah. So um, th this is, I I'm asking these questions for a reason. Um, Matt also does a decent amount of production every year, but you do it, I mean, you you do your own production in probably what, maybe a third of your time? How much time do you, do you dedicate to actually uh, selling your own houses? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I, staying in production has been important to me just to when I was at my previous brokerage, I was trying to uh, to manage and coach and train, and I was not allowed to produce. Um, 
and I couldn't keep a pulse on it. So I've, I've jumped back into production so I can do the training and the coaching, but I'm, I spend maybe, uh, 15 hours a week on my own production. Uh, if things are going crazy, I might push up to 20. Um, but there's, you know, it's, it's definitely in the more closer to the 15 hours a week and on my own sales. Gotcha. Okay. So within that time frame, you're able to do a lot of business. And then that's kind of what uh, I'm, I'm leaning to there. Um, but I, I do want to ask you a question before we jump into um, questions just about um, how you do real estate. You and your wife had an arranged marriage. I want to we hear were. about this. We, we were. We were an arranged marriage. So uh, I went to Westmont College, which was a uh, Christian liberal arts school in Santa Barbara, California. And I ran track and cross country there. Um, and upon graduating, I, I moved up to Seattle uh, right after I graduated from Westmont. And our collegiate coach, uh, who had become my mentor as well, kept calling me saying, hey, there's this freshman girl down here that you've got to meet. <laughs> wow. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm not going to, I'm 22, 23 years old. I'm not going to come meet an 18, 19 year old girl, you know, 1100 miles away. And he kept persisting uh, for three years, and then uh, our coach got inducted into the Collegiate Hall of Fame. He asked if I would come down and deliver the uh, induction speech for him, and I did that. Met my current wife at that time, who was a junior, and uh, the following year, our coach scheduled a few events up in the Seattle area, flew me down a couple times, and uh, he he orchestrated the entire marriage, and we actually never lived in the same state until uh, until we got married. Until we got married, the entire relationship was long distance. Fantastic, and it's worked out. You know, we're we're coming up on eighteen years. Congratulations! And it's, uh, thank you. Like most marriages, it's not completely smooth, but. Uh, I, I certainly wouldn't trade it. It's, it's wonderful, and uh, she's definitely the one that God chose, and I'm glad that, uh, that my coach saw that in me and found somebody who would tolerate me for 18 years. So that was, <laughs> that was a good, good find, but awesome. not, not going to write a book on how to get married uh, long distance, but it, it has worked for us. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, so um, as you know, you've moved into a new area and, and you didn't know a lot of people. Um, in fact, if I understand it, when you moved to Denver, you didn't really know anybody. Um, we, so, we did not know a single person in the state of Colorado, not one. So you're jumping into a new state trying to start up a real estate business. What percentage of your business has been referrals versus paid leads? Since I've moved to Colorado, um, just over 85% has been, uh, has been by referral. I, wow. uh, I, I tried using smart zip for a while, which is a kind of a paid lead, uh, um, artificial, not artificial intelligence, uh, analytics, smart analytics. And, you know, it was actually a, a really good program. Um, and what I learned was this, this program paying for the leads, they were able to tab who was going to be most likely to sell. And they did a great job on that. So they delivered on what they said they would deliver. And it doesn't matter if you know who's going to sell. If you don't have a relationship with them, they're still not going to use you. Right. So I, I found myself spending a lot of money to be disappointed and go, oh, shoot, I knew they were going to list. I knew they were going to list. And uh, so I've, I've gone pretty much completely away from the, the paid leads. Um, I've taken a little bit of the money that I've saved since I've switched to Fathom. And and done some marketing that I've never done in the past, but uh, yeah, over 80% has been referral based. Very good. So how do you then, like you did, move into a new community where you don't know anybody and in a very short amount of time build a referral only business? Yeah. Um, get involved in everything. It. Uh, we moved into um, a little small community called Ken Carroll, which is kind of a, a sub neighborhood of Littleton. And immediately, uh, my wife and I just got involved in everything we could within four months of moving here. Uh, and we were renting a house here cause we didn't know if this move to Colorado was going to be full time, part time. Um, in our mind, it was kind of going to be a year. And so we were renting a place and within, within four months I was on the, uh, one of the HOA committees, uh, and getting involved in that. Uh, my wife jumped in my daughter's very first year of school and kind of became the room mom. 
I jumped into a program for dads called Watchdog at our school, got involved in that. Um, Join, you know, found a, a group of trail runners uh, and joined their little trail running club. Um, literally got involved. Everything that our, you know, my daughter started playing soccer. The only thing I know about soccer is they fall down a lot and have to get carried off on a stretcher <laughs> for some reason. But we decided we'll coach your team. Um, so we just literally every single opportunity that we could find to get involved in anything that would be part of our day to day life, uh, we just dove in. So with that kind of uh, sort of strategy, I guess, um, and, and not, I mean, it's not just a business strategy. It's, it's a, to me, I look at it as a great life strategy because you're, you're, you're getting to know people around you and it's, and it's good for your community and it's good for you. Um, with that, though, I would imagine then your radius for where you do business is not going to be that big unless maybe people are referring people that are in other places. So what does that look like? That's a really good question. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest, I don't want to call it a mistake, one, one of the biggest challenges that real estate agents trap themselves into is they will go anywhere and, well, I'm licensed to sell in Colorado. So I'll go from Colorado Springs to Fort Collins or if I'm in Seattle, I'll go from you know, Marysville to Puyallup to Olympia and they spend so much time racing all around to places that they know nothing about and it just it's a waste of time so my radius you know if I get a really solid referral 35 to 40 minutes away I'll do it um, but my focus is it's no more than 15 minutes away and um, oftentimes if I get a good referral and it's longer than 15 minutes um, I'll just refer it out. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of referral fees, you know, getting paid for not doing anything is a, <laughs> that, that's up, that's up my alley. I enjoy that. Um, but yeah, I, I want to know the community that I'm working in. If, you know, if I'm working with a seller, I want to know how to market the lifestyle of that house and answer perspe uh, perspective questions from buyers about the parks, about the schools, about the HOA, about the proximity to events. Uh, if I'm working with a buyer, you know, they need to know how long it's going to take during rush hour to get to their work. And if I'm selling something 35, 45 minutes away, I don't know that neighborhood. I don't know what stores are good, what restaurants are good, what the HOA is like. What you know, you can you can do a little research right. on that. But uh, I want to be in my community and selling in my community and. I get excited about my community. I love where we live. And I could spend this next hour telling you how great Ken Carroll, Colorado is. And if I can't get excited about it, what, what am I doing trying to sell sell homes there? Awesome. So building a business that way is not only, I mean, practical in the sense that you're, um, you know, you're generating leads without having to pay marketing dollars, but then you're also saving time and travel. And, oh, um, and you're able to set yourself up as the local expert uh, in that area. So yeah. uh, somebody had a question here, um, uh, Alma. She said, uh, what are your thoughts on networking groups and chambers? That's a fantastic question. Um, and I'm going to answer those two different questions. Networking groups, I'm going to say that I don't like it all. Um, and the reason that I don't like them to me, it reminds me of a fraternity or a sorority in college. You're, you're paying for your friends. And that, that never appealed to me at all. Um, and I have seen clients of mine or friends of mine who are part of networking groups, and they have these requirements. If you have to send X number of referrals to different people, well, if the guy sitting across the table from you who's paying to be part of the same group is either not the caliber of person you want or not the caliber of professional you want, but you have to send him referrals, it's going to be a reflection on your business. Hmm. So I have visited a networking group one time as a guest, and I've never paid to be part of one. Chambers um, is, is a whole other story. So when I was in Gig Harbor, uh, I was one of the chamber ambassadors there, and I believe that that's an amazing place. Um, you're paying to be part of the chamber, but you're not paying for referrals. And if you're looking at building a community, and I'm, I'm big into, I, I believe that we are designed to be part of community. Um, in a chamber, those are the people who 
are the backbone of a community, especially if you're in a smaller town. I've, I've struggled with that out here in Denver. Denver just kind of bleeds into a whole bunch of other right. cities. There's no real defining uh, geographic area. You know, Gig Harbor was a peninsula. It was water, water, bridge, Canada. Um, so you know so, when you're in town and out of town. Yeah, there was no question about that. And so to be part of a chamber, if you're going to be part of a chamber, and this was something that was taught to me by other members of the chamber in Gig Harbor, be involved. Don't just sign up and wait for the leads. There were, the entire Gig Harbor real estate board was only about 300 agents. There were about 40 of them who were part of the chamber. And I was literally the only one who came to the events, the ribbon cuttings of the other businesses, the after hours, um, all the different uh, educational topics. I was the only one out of 40 who would show up. So who's going to get the business? So I, I think chambers are huge. Uh, I, I'm not a fan personally of networking groups. Well, thank you. I appreciate you answering that. And um, and if you're watching and you have questions for Matt, uh, feel free to, to jump in there and uh, ask something else as well. Um, so you've kind of alluded to this a little bit as far as people representing you. I want to ask you and kind of shift gears here about your concept of a team. Now, we've talked to a lot of people that have teams um, who, you know, they're, they're in a, gr a group of agents, maybe they're, net, you know, networked um, or, or they work remotely from their home or they come together in an office. Your concept of a team is a little bit different. And, and I really want our viewers to, to hear about this. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess I want to start with the traditional concept of a real estate team that you just described, you know, buyer's agent, seller's agent, showing agent, listing specialist. It's fantastic. It's it's spelled out in other real estate books. It's working well. There's a lot of top industry people who believe that that's kind of the future of the industry. Um, and if that's if that fits your personality, great. Uh, I started my real estate career on a traditional team, and I think I quickly learned it was really good for the team lead, and it was really good for the agents who just wanted a job selling homes. But for people like me that were okay talking to people and didn't want a job and didn't want to air that mo traditional model of a team didn't work for me. So I just want to make it clear as I kind of explain my team, right? The, the traditional model of a team works and works well. It doesn't work for me. Um, my team, the Matt Thompson home team consists of me as an agent and, and I'm the only licensed real estate agent on my team. The rest of my team is kind of a, what I would consider a, a real estate support group. Um, the lender that I use is part of my team. And so when I have them introduce themselves, it's, or if I'm going to refer them, I don't tell my clients, hey, let me have a lender call you. Or here's three names of lenders. Give them a call. I say, I'm going to have the finance manager of my team give you a call. And they'll talk with you. And then my lender calls, introduces themselves, says their name, their company name, so they're staying in compliance. And they say, with the Matt Thompson home team, and Matt asked me to give you a call. So I train my people, this is how I want you to address your clients. My clients, yeah, as part of my team. So it's my lender, it's my title team, uh, it's my handyman, it's my plumber, it's my radon specialist, it is. Uh, even, even my CPA for with, you know, uh, not CPA, my financial advisor with Northwest Mutual, they introduce themselves with their name with Northwest Mutual and the Matt Thompson home team. Matt asked me to give you a call. Um, and so I have really every service that I could think of that would be real estate related. I choose my people and I vet my people. I train them how to introduce themselves. I even print uh, business cards. Like my home inspector has a business card that's got their name, their logo, and then on the back of the business card is my logo, the Matt Thompson home team. And they, they just use those cards when they're dealing with my clients. But I don't ever want my clients to feel like they're being passed off or referred out. Uh, I, I want them to know that this is still a one-stop shop um but i'm the only agent on the team i, I don't have buyer right. specialists showing agents that sort of thing right um so none of your do you, do you pay any of your your team members 
No, no, nope. none of them are salary. You know, my my transaction coordinator, obviously, um, and I'll give her a shout out, Kristen Rohr with uh, with On Target Transactions. She gets paid at closing. She's a licensed agent as well, so I can legally pay her at closing. Right. Um, and that's the only one that I pay. Nobody's on salary. Nobody's on my books. Uh, I'm not responsible for anybody's you know well being. Uh, they get paid in as they do a great job for me and as they help me build my business. It's going to be business back they to get them. More referrals, right? To them. Get some more referrals. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, um, so on the flip side, then, um, and, and by the way, this, this is something that, uh, that I know you and I had talked about previously too. That if you're going to go forward and build a team of agents, this is a really great foundation um, because then oh, yeah. you have all these people at at the ready. So when you bring on more transactions through extra agents, they're um, you know they they have these people as a resource. Absolutely, yeah. I can't imagine building a traditional team without having this foundation in place. So, um, besides trying to provide excellent service to your clients, does your, do those other team members, um, you know, from those different companies, do they, do they kick back more leads to you or is it a one way street? No, they absolutely do. And, uh, you not at the same level. We're not on a one, one on one basis. Um, but I think there's two elements of it. One that the people on my team are like minded to me. So, um, I'm not just choosing a lender or a title company. I'm choosing a lender that has the same world view that I have, that, had, that treats people the same way, that presents themselves the same way. So we work well together. So from a lender's standpoint or an inspector's standpoint or a plumber's standpoint, they like me as much as I like them. And so they're, they are motivated to refer people to me. And a lot of these people, especially the the physical service providers, the handymen, the roofers, the right. plumbers, they're getting called to the house before the real estate agent is. We're thinking of selling our house. We're going to fix it up. They call somebody in. My handyman starts doing work, gets into a conversation. Yep, we're getting ready to sell the house. We don't want to do too much because we're selling it. Oh, and then they refer those people to me. Now, half the time, those people have already chosen an agent, and that's fine. And my team members will always be referring me, you know, and I get it from a lender's standpoint. Real estate agents will always be sending more business to lenders than lenders will be sending back to real estate agents. I understand that. Um, And there's also an element of, you know, hey, if I'm going to be building your business, the law of reciprocity would say that you're going to build mine as well. Um, And even things as mundane as my dentist. I switched dentists because my dentist listed his house with somebody else. And that's okay that he did that. And I'm not going to give this guy business if I'm not going to get business in return, if I can find somebody else as good and as competent as him, which I did. Um, and now I've had three sales this past year from our dentist. So, <laughs> Very good. Yeah, which was over, I mean, $2.1 million in volume in three sales from switching dentists. So it's it's a it does absolutely come back. Very cool. Um, somebody asked, and I, I'd love to hear your answer on this. Uh, what if staying in your community puts you up against twenty plus other agents that may have lived there a long time, and they would be considered the local expert? Uh, that was from uh, uh, Hillary. Well, Hillary, it sounds like you live in my neighborhood. Um, so we, I, I joke that every other house is owned by a realtor in our neighborhood. So Ken Carroll <laughs> is a fairly large subdivision. We've got about 4,000 homes. Um, so as an HOA, it, it's pretty large, but it's as a portion of Denver, it's very small. Um, that I have discovered just through, you know, looking at the MLS, looking at our local newspaper, looking at our Facebook pages, I've got 37 agents that I know of that live in my neighborhood. Hmm. The crazy thing was 16 of those 37 we're in the top 2% of all producing agents in the entire Denver MLS. Wow. So we, yeah, so 16 of us did 12 million or more last year. And all of them have lived here, put down roots, been a part of it. So I guess what I would answer to that question, and, and it absolutely, Hillary, it absolutely crossed my mind of, man, this is probably not the right neighborhood to follow. <laughs> uh, and I wouldn't spend money 
farming it. I wouldn't just send postcards. I don't run an ad in the newspaper. Um, I was joking, we have a, a, a local elementary school in our neighborhood. They have a 5K that they run at the start of every year uh, to raise funds for the PTA. There were eight primary sponsors of this 5K and seven of them were realtors. So you had a, a local spa, wow. uh, the, the t-shirt was a spa and then seven real estate agents names on the back of the t-shirt. Well, I ran the race. And while these other agents are sitting at their table at the post-race party, hoping somebody will come by to pick up their mug or their Frisbee or their cup warmer or whatever it is. I'm out there talking with the other runners. I'm up on the podium. I'm, you know, communicating with people as we walk through the, the snack line. So if you become part of the community, you'll, you'll work your way in now. And, and again, my goal isn't to get a hundred percent market share, right? We've got 75 to 80 sales a year happen in our neighborhood. Do the buyer and seller. It's 150 to 160 sides that happen just in our neighborhood every year. What if I could get 10% of those? Right. That's a that's a pretty decent living at our average sales price of where we are. And I'm going to get some outside of the neighborhood as well. So don't be intimidated by other agents and be different. You know, we've got 37 agents. I'm the only one on an HOA committee. Uh, I don't sponsor events. I attend events. Um, I'm way more visible in our community. You know, rather than having my name on a banner on the baseball field, I, I'm out front directing traffic and being a crossing guard at least one day a month. You know, so it's right. people see me everywhere and no, nobody knows I've been here less time than all these other agents because I'm way deeper ingrained into the community. Um, we have a local newspaper that comes out once a week. It's a 16 page paper. There were 21 real estate agent ads <laughs> in a 16 page paper this last week. That's a lot of noise. It's a lot of noise. I write letters to the editor talking about great parts of our neighborhood and letters to the editor. So every week I'm in the paper for free while these guys are paying 300 to 800 bucks to be in the paper. They're doing the real estate thing. Look, I did it again. Look how great I am. And I'm writing a letter to the editor, you know, thanking the, the neighborhood grounds crew for keeping our grounds looking so good. Thanking the equestrian center for hosting such a great uh, pony ride day, you know, encouraging right. people to go try a new trail. So people are, the other 36 agents are getting lumped into, oh gosh, that's what real estate agents do. And then there's Matt, who is always saying something positive or posting cool pictures to the Facebook page or doing something right. like that. So that's a super long-winded answer to say, don't worry about it and don't just do what everybody else is doing. Dive in and just be part of the community um, and do it from a service mindset. Um, if you're just trying to get business, people will sniff that out. Right. If you're trying to serve the community and really better the community, people will feel that and it will become business for you. Um, I'm going to follow up with another question, if you don't mind. Um, Go for it. Cher asked uh, about the team members. Now, I will, we'll talk, maybe do a couple more questions on the, the team members and then we'll jump to something else here. But they were asking about your team members. Do they have other companies that they work with as well? Um, or is it just strictly the math? I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine not for like a loan officer or something like that, but, right. um, but for your other uh, you know, contractors and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's a good question. They do biz they're in business for themselves as well. And I can't possibly provide enough business for for them to keep their families fed and their business running. So I am one of several real estate agents that they do business with. Every single one of them, both in Seattle and here in Denver, that I've done this concept with about my team and given them cards have said, wow, nobody has ever done this before. So yeah, they're still working with other people. They don't pitch themselves as, you know, I'm Joe the plumber with Dunright Plumbing and the Matt Thompson home team if they're not working with my right, clients. Right. Um, 
so it's only when they're working with my clients do they give them the Matt Thompson business cards or identify themselves as part of my team um, and they still do business for other people and you know the funny thing about real estate um, I'll say this carefully it's not a difficult business to get into you, you take a, a couple of online classes you pass a test with a C minus and you're a real estate agent for life um, <laughs> You know, so it's you've got a bunch of people in the industry who aren't necessarily great business people, and you say, "Well, gosh, Matt, if that works so well, why is everybody else not doing it?" Door knocking works really well too, and not very many people are doing it. Open right. houses work really well, and not very many people are doing them well. So it's just one of those things of you know, people always ask me when I teach classes, "Man, how come you're giving away all your secrets?" Because I know full well, either you're going to implement it and do something better and come back and share that with me and go, oh my gosh, I took your class and did this and guess what happened? And then I can use it. Or 80% of the people that take my classes are going to do it and go, that was a great idea and never do it. Right. So I'm not worried about other real estate agents stealing my idea. And if they do, let's say my plumber, who's part of the Matt Thompson home team, let's say somebody else does pick him up and now he's saying he's part of their home team. Well, he's only saying it to the, that agent's clients anyway, so it's right. not taking business away from me. He's not advertising that publicly. I started it. I've given him more business, so the referrals are still going to come to me. So I'm not worried if, if they do that for other people. So a couple of questions then as it relates to finding uh, team members. How do you set something like this up, mm -hmm. and how do you also ensure that that person does represent you well. I mean, you, instead of just calling up the, the first tile guy, you know, on Google or whatever, uh, how do you, how does that happen? How do you put together a quality team like that? Yeah, it's a really good question. And it's the hardest part of, of the whole team concept. Um, the best way for me to do it, and, and I guess I'll explain how I did it when we first moved out here. So when we moved to, to Colorado and we didn't know anybody, I didn't even have anybody I trusted to say, hey, right. who's your plumber, who's your lender, who's... So I went on to our, our neighborhood Facebook page. We have a very active neighborhood Facebook page. And I just, I went on to there and said, who, who do you know? Who are your service yeah. people? Who's your best? And, and part of it, I just started, you know, I, I started kind of lurking on there too. And I would, I would look, okay, if somebody has concrete work that they need done... I would just search concrete work and see whose name popped up the most. And then I would call that person. Hey, I saw right. you, you, know, you were referred 30 times. We'd love to talk with you. And so I have those conversations. Um, and if you trust your gut, you know, you can, you can tell if you're being sold or if somebody really is a genuinely good person. And it's a great way to reach out and touch your your sphere and your database when i when i was working at my daughter's school you know doing the watchdog thing and hanging out in the in the drop off line directing traffic get into conversations with people hey you on your way to work what do you do great that's how i found my my uh, cpa he was dropping off his kids you know that's how i found our radon specialist she was driving a truck that said her radon company across right. the back so you, you have those conversations and then you have the conversation about how you expect it to be done. And a lot of people, I'm not going to say a lot, a, a handful of people don't agree to do it my way. You know, I'm not going to hand out your business cards. I'm not going to say that I'm with the Matt Thompson home team. They're afraid of what that will do to their business. Okay, next. Right. Um, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I'm the only good real estate agent in Denver. I believe I'm the best, but I also believe that there's there's 80 other Fathom agents in, in the area that I would have full confidence in representing me. There's other agents for other companies that are good. So if I don't get the best plumber or the best floor or the best roofer, but I get one of the best who's willing to to do it, I'm okay with that as long as they meet my standards and the my clients are happy with them. You know, I, there's people that would say I'm not the best real estate agent. Okay. That, that's, that's fine. And others would say, yes, he is. So it's the same thing with, with team members is you, you vet them, you make sure they're doing well. You talk to your clients. It's this industry. It's a, it's a math equation. How many people are you talking to? How often are you talking to them? Well, it's the how often that we're talking to them that people get hung up on. It's like, I don't know what to say. 
Well, if you went through your database today and called everybody and just said, hey, I'm wondering if you know a good roofer, a good cider. So, there you, you know, go. Perfect. <laughs> it's so easy. It, it's so easy. It's just a super, super simple business that we're in. Yeah, I'm looking to I'm looking to improve the quality of my service for all of my clients. And if you ever sell the same for you, do you know anybody? Oh man, that's genius. And and it. let's say you know when I first moved in, let's say you're in a new area. You just moved to an area and you don't even know who to talk to. There's a house up the street that we drive by every day and it's got one of those huge dumpsters out front because they're you knock on the door, "Hey, it looks like you're doing some remodeling. You mind if I pop in and see?" Right. Never, ever have I ever had a homeowner look at me sideways and be like, if people are remodeling their house, they are excited. They want to tell you about it. Yeah. Yeah. And so you say, are you happy with the work they've done? Are you happy with this? And so even if you're brand new to an area, you can figure out who those top people are by going for a walk and seeing who's doing what. Right. You know, you got a nice front yard, go knock on their door and say, hey, my wife and I were just out for a walk. We noticed that your flower garden is, do you do this yourself or do you have a landscaper? Right. There's a touch. There's a conversation. It's, it's not a difficult business. And you're not showing up with your, your realtor badge. You're just, you're just being a neighbor. I'm just being a neighbor. Yeah. yeah. There, there's no, hey, by the way, do you know anybody who wants to buy or sell real estate when you're done? It's, <laughs> hey, thank you. This looks great. Do you mind if I come by and bug you if I ever have any questions about growing my own garden. Be a neighbor. And if you're not advertising yourself anyways, it doesn't take long usually for it to come up with what do you do? Um, and and they're asking and you're not you're not volunteering yeah. that information. Yep. So very good. Well, I, I really appreciate you out outlining that. Um, and uh, if, if anyone else has questions about that, uh, throw them on there. We're going to kind of jump uh, to sort of a different thing here. Uh, I, I love asking this for from people that have been in the business a long time, um, just whether it's real estate or anything else. I mean, it's always fascinating to hear. If you could go back, um, having been in it a while, if you could talk to your former self or you're speaking to a realtor getting into the business, do you have a couple of pieces of advice where you would tell yourself, I would do this differently um, that uh, mm. our viewers could learn from? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um that I should have spent more time on. Than it was <laughs> well, that's yeah. fine. We nothing. It was perfect. And we can just no, move on. Yeah, it was, you know, it, I started on a team and I don't regret starting on a team. And if I went back, I would encourage myself not to start on a team. Um, the previous brokerage that I was with, that was their model. They borderline invented teams and they really encouraged you to be part of a team um, and I wasted a, my, my first two years of really getting my name out there were lost because I was part of the compass team. So when I went out on my own, it was starting over, uh, to get my name out there. So I think one of the things that I would say would be, be bold enough to what, what my business coach said, burn your boat. Don't have a safety net. Um, just jump in both feet and, and go. And, and be bold enough to do it on your own. Um, and then I guess the the other thing that I would learn or, or say that I wish that I I would do differently or encourage people is set up systems from the start. Um, my, my coaches have always taught system, system, systems. And I kind of went, yeah, I'm pretty good at flying by the seat of my pants. <laughs> and if you're selling 10 to 12 houses a year, Flying by the seat of your pants is fine. If you're trying to sell 30 homes a year in 15 hours a week, you, you need to have systems in place. And getting the systems in place is hard. Having them run and keep your business, that's a, a wonderful thing. Um, and so I, I wish I would have been more organized and really taken the time when I didn't have a ton of business to really start implementing those systems and get you know, standard videos in place and get standard, you know, here's what's next, uh, things from my clients in place and get, you know, client thank you gifts in place. Uh, and just have that, you know, a something as simple as a reminder of four days out or five days out from closing, have an automated thing go out to say, don't forget to transfer your utilities. Cause I can't tell you how many times I've been at closing going, Oh 
shoot. Oh, no. Did you, yeah. Did you call the, the trash company? Did you call the electric company? And, and we're trying to sit there at the closing table trying to switch utilities over so they don't get closed. <laughs> right. Stupid systems like that that would just just be those reminders that I didn't take the time to set up until much later when it was much harder. Well, I appreciate you uh, being willing to share that. Um, <laughs> on the flip side, um, some things that you, you have done well. Uh, I, I, um, I, you know, you're in, you're an educator. Uh, you have a background in education. You continue to instruct. Um, what kind of educational content would you recommend newer agents consuming? Um, yeah. Um, if I get on my soapbox here, tell me to tell me to get re go, restructured. Go, go for it. This is this is your world. I mean, you 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 are a teacher, so I'd love to hear this. I one of the things that I think is killing our industry is our complete lack of standards and lack of relevant education. We're we're sending these people out here with you know at least in Washington and Colorado, the pre licensing courses have nothing to do with being a good real estate agent. I don't care how many square feet are in an acre. I don't care what the Conway Bogue Act said. It's the dumbest education. And then once you get your license, we offer intriguing classes like how to get a mold inspection and Title 101 and all this other stuff that, again, has nothing to do with being a real estate agent. I don't care about mold. That's why I have a mold inspector on my team. I don't know what interest rates are or what the loan process is. That's why I have a finance guy on my team. And the, the whole argument of, well, shouldn't you at least know something about that? I do. I know to call the person who's a professional about that. <laughs> I don't want the liability of knowing a little bit to be dangerous, and I don't want to take the time. So, so the type of education that we're offering is so poor. So to answer the question of what do I consider to be good education, if we're going to argue that this is a people business, then let's start offering education that teaches you about people, how to communicate with people, how to uh, recognize different personality types, whether you're using a DISC personality or the Enneagram or whatever these other personality assessments are, how can you quickly identify a personality type and how do you adjust to that? Because it's I'm not a really outgoing person. This Every personality assessment I've ever taken has said, you want nothing to do with sales. <laughs> I, don't, I love community. I don't really like people. I like one-on-one. -on -one. I hate being in big groups. And in order to be successful, I need to learn how to be outgoing and engaging. And so I take classes and I read books on how to be engaging. Conversely, when that salesman comes at me real hard and they've got that East Coast personality and they're talking really loud and really fast, I want nothing to do with that person because I feel like I'm being sold. So it, I need to learn how to, if I'm dealing with that person, how to speak faster, how to speak louder. If they're going to be a client of mine, I can't come right. in with my little calm West Coast ways when I've got an East Coast guy going, man, are you even competent? Can you keep up with me? Right. So. I think classes that teach you how to deal with people and how to adjust your own personality and, and how mindset affects both you and how mindset affects potential clients. Um, and, and then competency type classes, you know, contract classes, I think should be mandatory every single year. I teach continuing education contract classes for the state. And I still take two classes a year from two different attorneys because everybody's got a different take on it. And there's too much stuff in that contract to have any concept what's in there. I still take classes from our MLS because there's features of our MLS that even though I've been in this for 16 years, I go, whoa, I didn't know it could do, it could pull live stats that I could share to my Facebook and they were constantly updated. So I anything that is truly competency related to what you do day to day, um, you, know, you, you look at a real estate agent and you go, gosh, the average real estate agent nationwide is doing what, eight transactions a year? A good real estate agent's doing maybe 20. If, you, if you're doing one and a half transactions a month, what are you doing with the rest of your time? Hmm. 
get out there and get into classes. Meet other real estate agents. Hear what they're doing. Uh, you know, with the company, with being with Fathom now and being virtual, I have to be able to get out there and be, intentionally be part of the industry and be around other agents because I, I don't have that now that I'm not in an office setting. So I'm at realtor boards. I'm at title company classes. And, and you've got time to do it. Uh, so, so really jump in and find true competency related classes and then people and personality and mindset type classes. Stop doing the how to read a title report. You know how I read a title report? Hey, do you want to do a three-way call with my title rep and she'll walk us through? That's how I read a title report. I've been in it 16 years and I still don't know how to read one. I don't need <laughs> to. It's not important to me. I have the best people in that industry to do it for me. Um, so be an expert in the things that you're supposed to be an expert in and leave the expertise of the things that you're not supposed to be an expert in to, to yeah. the experts. Um, yeah. I, I appreciate you too talking about taking classes or reading books or getting education uh, as it relates to um, personality because uh, someone, one of the comments was, um, you know, it's great, but I'm an introvert. And, and there, you know, in that case, now you're, you're realizing your weakness um, as, you know, just like an extrovert has their own weakness. Um, uh, now I'm going to take classes on how to, um, how to be better in that area. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, some... if, if, if whoever said they're an introvert, you know, if you've ever taken the disc personality, I'm an SC. The highest things to me are safety, security, compliance. I have no I in me at all. I mean, it is <laughs> at the bottom, like unregistered. Um, and you can still learn how to bring that up. Now, at the end of the day, I'm exhausted and I need to go on a walk with my dog out in the mountains to, to reset. <laughs> and you can always learn how to pull that out of you. It's uncomfortable. I don't like it. Um, I like what it gives me. Yeah. It makes, it makes me enough money that I can take time to take a day off and go skiing in the middle of the week uh, and be by myself. Very good. A couple of people asked about systems, if you had any recommendations on really um, setting up good systems for you as a realtor. Do you, do you have any recommendations off the top of your head? If not, we can, we can yeah, post, I it, think, post it later in the notes or whatever. But uh, No, I, I think that one of the, the things is to really use a contact management system. Uh, you know, Our brokerage gives us KV Core's contact management system. The agents in my district who are using that are having a ton of success with it. I've used a program called Lion Desk forever. Um, when I compare it to KV Cores, I don't think it's any better. I'm just paying for it. Um, <laughs> but I use it. And, and it's it's setting it up so it's not just a Rolodex, but it's an actual database that's working for you. So do you have, um, for example, home anniversaries is a big one for me. When I moved to Denver and didn't have any clients, Every single person I would meet, uh, I went through the directory of my daughter's school and found all her friends. I looked them up in the, in the public records and found out when they bought their home. And then I set up a system to, to remind me to send them an anniversary card every single year on the purchase of their home. Very cool. I wasn't their agent, but they started hearing from that. So, um, and, and then I guess the other thing I would say is, all of my systems have come from talking to better agents than myself. I went to people who are doing more volume than I am, asked them what systems they've had, and I have in, in 16 years, I have never once had a single agent say, I'm not willing to share that. Every company that I've ever gone to, uh, I've only worked for two different companies, but I've asked Remax agents, Sotheby's agents, local agents, and all of them are willing to share with me, this is what I do. Um, and so you find out what they're doing and then you tailor it to yourself and get it set up as automated as possible. Uh, I love BombBomb, the video email system. So record you know, every question that you get from a buyer or seller, answer it, and then record a video of you answering it and have that in place because uh, it's not going to be a one-time question over the course of your career. Right. Very good. Um, I want to ask you, uh, th this I thought was just a great story. So if if you want to share it, you can. 
Um, but you, you talked to me about uh, 2008, where you were you, you kind of given advice: jump in, feet first, or you know, head first. Go ahead and, and just do stuff um, and educate yourself. And you kind of had an experience that forced you to do that in 2008. Uh, are you? Um, y- y- yeah. Um, you know, so I jumped into real estate in 04 and. You know, it was a very similar market to it is now, and it was not a skill-based market, and I was making a fairly good amount of money not doing anything right just because that's what the market did. And then when the market crashed in Seattle, I mean, it it really crashed. It was behind everything else, and we kind of watched Florida and Arizona and California and Nevada. We watched them crashing, and went, well, it won't happen to us. We've got Starbucks and Amazon and Microsoft and Nordstrom. It won't happen here. And then it did in 2008. Um, and, and things shut down. Um, you know, and I, I was in a rough position because we, 2007 was my best year ever to that point. Um, and like any good American, I went out and bought a new house, bought myself a new car, bought my wife a new car. Uh, our first child was born in, in 2007. Uh, so my wife stopped working. So all of a sudden I had huge new expenses, less income because my wife wasn't working. And then the market just stopped. Um, and after having my best year ever in 2007, in 2008, I sold six houses, um, you know, for, for about 1.8 million in total volume. And, and I had no idea what to do. I was trying to get back into teaching. Well, it was the middle of the year, so I couldn't. I was calling uh, bus garages to see if I could be a, a school bus driver. I was trying to find other work. And Realtor Magazine came out. And on the cover of Realtor Magazine was a gal named Teresa Boardman from uh, from St. Paul, Minnesota. And she, she was with the company I was with at the time. And she was listed as you know the top real estate blogger of that year. I didn't know what a, I literally did not know what a blog was. I had never heard that word. So I looked her up and I called her and I said, Hey, saw you on the cover of Realtor Magazine. Congratulations. What's a blogger and, and can you teach me? And she kind of agreed to, to mentor me a little bit. I established a blog. I uh, was fortunate enough that Gig Harbor was kind of a resorty type area that people were searching. And by the end of 2008 and into 2009, you know, I was, I was number one page one on Google for 50 or 60 different known search terms around gig Harbor. It was to the point where the city of gig Harbor asked if they could just link their site to my blog because my blog was getting more hits. You know, I was getting about 11,000 unique visitors a month on my blog. Um, and it was just from calling her and saying, what is this? And then having her teach me how to set up as a free WordPress site. And she just once a week would, would kind of walk me through, um, helped me get uh, connected with a blogging network at the time. And, uh, and that's what carried me through that downturn in the, in the Seattle market was all of a sudden I was seen as the guy because I had this huge internet presence all of a sudden. It was not paid for. I didn't have any money right. to pay for it. Um, but that really, that was a huge turning point. Um, you know, and then as short sales came in too, you know, all the other agents were kind of like, oh, I'm not going to do short sales. It's, it's not a big thing here. And I agreed to do them. And so I started taking referrals. I was like, hey, if you've got a short sale, send them to me. I'll give you a referral fee. So I had agents from all different companies sending me their, their short sale leads. And then, you know, a year later, 65, almost 70% of our, our business was distressed sales. Hmm. Um, and so that, that was important just to go, okay, well, this is the market of today. So I'll, I'll learn it. Um, and wrote blogs about short sales and wrote about how to, how to talk to the bank and what you need to know. And so as, as people started searching short sales in gig harbors, yep. You know, it was my information that was coming up and people were like, well, how do you know all this? I would steal other content. I would read, you know, if, if Realtor.com or somebody else did it, I would paraphrase that and then link back to to their right. page. So there was no plagiarism, but it, it was still all the hits were coming to me. Yeah. Very good. I mean, the the consistent theme that I'm hearing again and again throughout this is make hay while the sun shines. I mean, yeah. whether, whether, you know, whether it's you're in, in between listings um, and you just you have time on your hands, do something, get learn something, get involved. Um, yeah. 
uh, we probably should wrap it up here as it's, we're sure. almost hitting the hour mark. But uh, um, somebody had asked about books books for introverts, but I also wanted to ask you what other books that you've read recently or anything that uh, you would want to recommend that has made a, uh, an impact on your business. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, books for introverts. I'll, well, well, you can put that in the notes. I'll, I'll look and see. Okay. I know I've read a couple and I don't, uh, I don't remember what we've got. Um, I, I think one that really helped me was uh, Brene Brown wrote uh, The Gift of Imperfections, I think is the title. Um, and it talks about working through your imperfections and, and embracing those. Um, the one that I'm in right now that I just I would say is completely transforming how I do my marketing and how I approach people is uh, Simon Sinek's Start With Why. Uh, if you're not a reader, go on and Google his TED Talk. Uh, Sinek is S-I-N-E-K, uh, Start With Why. It, it is completely transforming our, our whole industry. Everything about our natural selves wants to tell people what we do. Here, here's, you know, I'm the top agent. I sell houses. I do this. I do this. I, I take good photos. And Simon Sinek argues people don't care what you do. They buy why you do it. And he has some just inarguable examples in there. And it's, it has been so much fun for me to take what he's talking about and transfer that to my real estate business. Um, so I would say, you know, Ninja Selling by Larry Kendall, Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller. Those are good real estate books. You should have identification with them. And then get away from, from business books or real estate books all the time. I'm a huge fan of Stephen Covey. I love John Maxwell. Um, Dave Ramsey's not my favorite speaker. I don't agree with everything he says, but he's got a book called Entree Leadership that I think is fantastic. Um, but getting into the, some of these other books that are just about life. Um, Meb Kowleski, who's a, a American distance runner, has one called 26 Marathons. And just that, that talks about persistence and fighting through things. And it's, a, it's an amazing book. Um, John Stockton's biography, uh, you know, coming from being a total underdog. So it's, I love reading books like that because, you know, business doesn't excite me, to be honest with you. I don't. Uh, <laughs> community excites me. Business funds my life. Um, so I, I like to read books about people and, um, th those would be, I think Simon Sinek's start with why is where I would encourage everyone to start. And if you, like I said, if you're not a reader, go watch the Ted talk. It's, it's really fantastic. Matt, thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing anything. I, it, I'll leave you with any other word here. Anything else you want to share before we're done or should we wrap things up? You know, I, I would say my last word would be, uh, don't, don't be different, be different. This is such a clone industry and everybody's doing things the same way and it's tired and it doesn't work anymore and if you can just be authentic and be different uh, and remember that it's just a math equation how many people are you going to talk to how often are you going to talk to them if you hit that equation you'll be successful and and don't worry about all the other stuff it will it will fill itself in very good Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, it's been very, I, I think, just a very fruitful interview, and and, uh, and good luck to you out there in Colorado. So thanks for coming Perfect. on the show. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, very, yeah you're welcome. Uh, before we let you go, though, of course, we want to remind you that Fathom Realty offers 100% commission in the tools designed for your success. Uh, it's a brokerage that serves you, not the other way around. You get stock with every transaction. KV Core, as Matt mentioned, uh, truly affordable health care, paperless transaction system, multi-tiered support. Uh, you get a lot of support and much, much more. So uh, if you're watching, visit fathomcareers.com. Learn about uh, brokerage that works for you. Next week, we have uh, Nick Bedalian. He's out in the, he, he is East Coast and he has the East Coast, let's go get him real fast kind of personality. So uh, you get to hear, we heard someone from the West Coast. Now we get to hear someone from the East Coast next next week. Um, and and DC is a very transient area. Uh, we, we used to live out there for a little while. And so he's going to talk about generating business in that kind of environment, um, as well as what causes dropout in the real estate industry as he's, he's led a team and also oversees a lot of agents in that area. So join us next week, same time, 1.30 p.m. next Wednesday. Thanks.